scope of our ability to see, there's many, many hurting people. I don't mean to make you sad, but maybe to remind you, you know, to look beyond yourself and, and, uh, because, you know, one of these days it could be one of us going through maybe not the same thing, but maybe something just as devastating. And uh, we need to remember, folks, <clears throat> not just Christians, but especially Christians. Amen. I think my wife, she received uh, something on email or something. <clears throat> She was mentioning to me a while ago uh, that Brother Strawn and his family, uh, I think it's his, I want to say it's his wife's sister or and brother-in-law or something like that, that they are pastors in Puerto Rico. And they asked this morning, of course, we didn't realize that they'd asked about it till this evening. That's the first time we've seen it, but... So keep them lifted up uh, to the Lord in prayer. You know, we hear the bad side of, of uh, you know, the fighting, the ISIS stuff going on in, in uh, Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan, you know, and there's reporting of the bad guys a lot. But there's also a lot of good... A lot of good people that are that are in uh, that area that you don't ever hear about, and uh, <clears throat> little kids, beautiful little kids. There's a lot of them uh, that are suffering from from what people are doing, suffering from the violence, from. Uh, you know, uh, from Islam amongst uh, many other things, too, could be mentioned, I guess. You know, from greed to money to power, people wanting power and all this stuff. <clears throat> but anyway, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of people need prayer. Some of them will never probably see them face to face. But uh, <clears throat> praise God. We need to remember people. Because one of these days, we may, we may need people to remember us. Amen. Praise God. You know, I don't, I, again, I'm not trying to sound pessimistic or anything. Do you know there's Christians that, there's Christians down there at the coast that's lost their homes. Yeah. Did you know that? Y'all believe that? Y'all yeah. believe all the Christians were exempt? No, they wouldn't, was they? They went through some things. <clears throat> Just like the people of the world. People that's not living for God, they they have, and and so it is in these war torn countries. Uh, I do believe the protective hand of God is upon His people, but we, we're not exempted from everything. You know, are we? Y'all think we're exempted from everything? I don't think that we are. I think we've all been through, at times, trials and difficulties times maybe you even wondered if God was with you have you ever had those temptations to wonder that think that <clears throat> you know why am I praying about this I don't see an answer but he is he is just because you don't see it the way you want to see it immediately but what I'm saying is is that you know when wars and stuff going on in our world, Christians can be in those arenas of that activity going on. And prayer changes things, folks. Prayer changes things. When people pray for one another. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to frighten you, but, you know, there's a lot of talk of people lobbing nuclear war missiles and stuff around and uh, that seems like a foreign thing to us but if the right war gets started things could get pretty bad <clears throat> right they could be 
just like Christians down at the coast had that stuff, activity, they were, it was around them. And God has seen them through it, I'm sure. And just like other places, things can happen here too. They can. I pray they won't. <laughs> but uh, if they do, yeah, we may need people praying for us. We need to be praying for one another. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Well, God is good. Isn't he good? All this bad stuff, you know, that men are doing, it's not God doing it, it's men doing it. Amen. I know his prophecies will come to pass. I seen uh, something I was reading, and it said, Jesus is coming. And uh, <clears throat> here's the proof. And I didn't read it or anything, but uh, I don't know what the person was, you know, here's the proof. But I do believe there's plenty of proof. I believe there's plenty of things if a person reads the Bible and uh, really listens to it. Uh, I believe there's a lot of evidence, you know, taking place in our world, not just in America, uh, but in our world that the good Lord told us, you know, to be watchful for. And I'm looking for Jesus to come, aren't you? Are you? Are you really looking for Jesus to come? I am looking for Jesus' second coming. I don't know the day or the hour, but I do believe it's, yeah, it's sure liable to happen in my lifetime. Praise God. Now, now, I'll be honest with you, I've believed that ever since I've been in church. I have been, and I got in church in 79, and I still believe it. I believe it as strong today as maybe even stronger. I don't know if I could have believed it any stronger, but I believe it. Amen. <clears throat> as sure as the Lord started this thing, he's also going to finish it. Praise God. You know, everything with us has a beginning, doesn't it? Doesn't it? There was a beginning, folks. There, I said there was a beginning. And a lot of people give their ideals of how it all began. But I, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe in the beginning, God created uh, the heaven and the earth. I believe that. You believe that? I believe you believe that. I, that's, that's what I believe. I don't believe that there was no Big Bang. And I don't believe that, <clears throat> that there's been millions and millions and millions of years. I believe they're off in their calculations. You know? Praise God. <clears throat> and I believe that as sure as God started this, I believe there will also be an end to it according to his, as his word explains it. Amen. So, praise God. I believe as sure as the, you know, the Lord made man, I believe man will one of these days see God. I believe that. I believe I will see God. Good or bad, I will see God. I want it to be good. Don't you? That's why I'm going to church. That's not only why I'm going to church, but that's why I want to have a prayer life. I want to stay in touch with him. I want to stay close to him. I want to live for him. Amen? I, I consider really and truly, I thank God for life, but I don't want to forget that he is the very most important of anything that exists. That is my last day, I tell that. He is of utmost importance. If, if I don't accomplish anything else but living for him, I, you know, I will have achieved. I will accomplish a lot of things, I hope, you know, but one thing I got to make sure I accomplish is that is living for him. Amen. I want to do that. Praise God. Jesus is what life is all about. 
Amen? I said, he is. He really is. He didn't make all this world just so I could live a short span of time. He, he's got a reason for making all this stuff, for creating all this stuff. And uh, <clears throat> at the end of it all, he's going to have a people out of all generations that have walked with him. And those people are going to be with him forever. And we're, we're playing out our role tonight. We have our allotted years on this earth, whatever they are. Some go quickly. Some go young. Some live a long time, but it ain't near very long compared to eternity. You know? But one of these days, God's going to, he calls them, what's it, is it in Malachi? He's going to gather his jewels. Is that Malachi? I can't remember. He's going to gather his jewels, his people, those that instead of living sinfully in this world, they chose to fear God and serve the Lord. Amen? He's going to have those people with him forever. That's what Jesus said. He gives eternal life those that believe in him praise God that's what I want eternal. don't you want eternal life there's Daniel that's what I want eternal life amen this, this is not just a good fairy tale we're involved in this is something that's real you know and uh, I am so glad Jesus caused me to see that and understand that uh, praise God what life's about amen it's about Jesus amen well, praise God. That ain't going to cost you nothing. That's just a little extra. So we're going to turn in our Bibles tonight to Ephesians chapter number 4. <clears throat> we're going to read two verses of Scripture here, but we will look at some more. And we're glad Andy's back from vacation. <laughs> we're glad he's with us. Amen. I like this fella. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 7 and 8. <clears throat> Paul to the Christians at Ephesus says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Amen. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everybody say the measure of of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Everybody say, he gave gifts unto men. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Lord, would you help us tonight as we study your word? Would you touch us by the word of the Lord? I ask for grace ministering that word, not only in this assembly, but in every place where men are calling upon your name and the truth. Bless their services, God. Let lives be touched in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Praise God. <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you about the gifts of God. Now, I was going to start talking about this last week. And... Uh, <clears throat> But I told you that I felt like, remember what I talked about last Wednesday is the storms? And I felt like the Lord laid that upon my heart. You know, I needed to talk about that. <clears throat> but, let, you know, we talked about we go through storms. And, you know, again, like I said just a while ago, that Christians aren't exempt from storms. You know, storms happen to everybody. But anyway, so I went ahead and ministered that because I felt so... Uh, pressed that the Lord wanted me to talk about that. So, but anyway, I'm going to go on, and this is what I was going to teach on last Wednesday night. And then, lo and behold, y'all remember what John preached on Sunday night? <laughs> he talked about, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, basically, about letting God use you. And that's what this is about. So, uh, he kind of gave us a springing board on talking about this. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Paul said unto every one of us is given grace 
according to the measure according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And it says when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. And he did what? He gave gifts unto men. And I want to talk about uh, the gifts unto men, basically. Praise God. God's gifts. Amen. <clears throat> I guess, first of all, though, that we've got to lay a little groundwork in talking about this because the most important gift uh, that mankind needs is salvation. Salvation. Amen. And so let's look at Romans chapter number 6 and verse number 23. This is a time where we uh, get into the word of the Lord and we hopefully learn something. Amen. Teaching tonight. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. It says in Romans 6 and verse number 23, Paul to the Christians there at Rome, he said, for the wages of sin is death that's pretty uh understandable that just like you get a paycheck uh, for the work that you have done uh, what you get for sinning is death just like you work to get a paycheck if you sin you get death that's what comes for that's the wages of sin is death but everybody say but the gift of God. I want you to hang, really take notice of that. But the gift of God. Everybody say the gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life. It doesn't necessarily say that eternal life is the gift of God. And a lot of people think that's what it's saying at first reading. But listen, what is it saying? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Praise God. The gift of God comes through Jesus Christ. Amen? And that gift, when you have that gift, you have eternal life abiding in you. Praise God. Okay, let's look at this. I'll show you. Let's go to Acts chapter number 8, verses 18 through 20. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I would keep you quite lengthy, uh, quite long uh, of a time. But just to give you the scenario, <clears throat> the Christians were being persecuted. And so Philip, uh, which was one of God's preachers, he went down to Samaria he, because he was escaping the persecution. He went down to Samaria, and there he preached Christ unto those people. He preached the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus. He did. And when he preached, the people started believing what he was preaching, and devils began to be cast out. People that were sick, that were blind, all kinds of ailments, people were being healed, and the people were believing, and they were repenting of their sins, and they were getting baptized in Jesus' name. It says that. Okay, before Philip ever went down there, there was a false preacher, a sorcerer, what he was. And he bewitched the people, and many of the people had followed him. Okay, his name was Simon. And whenever Philip came, the people started believing what Philip was preaching about Jesus and the name of Jesus. Amen. They were being baptized in Jesus' name, and so many great and mighty works were taking place. Simon uh, saw what the things that was happening through Philip's ministry that he wanted to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. So Philip evidently baptized him in Jesus' name. Amen. But the Bible says that even though all these things had been taking place, the people still had not received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, stop and think about that in modern day. 
if we was having revival services, okay, and people were starting to get healed, and p devils were actually being cast out of people. Have you ever seen a devil be cast out of somebody? Oh, over the years, I've seen some pretty, you know, I, I've actually had them talk back to us and, you know, and stuff like that. And you could, you know, cast those things out of people, out of their lives. Not everybody's problem's got a devil, but there are times when people do have devils in them. And, and, and that's what was happening. And these people were being delivered from these devils, and people were also being healed of all kinds of sicknesses and stuff. Now, if that was taking place in this church tonight, and, and the Bible says people were receiving the word of God. Yeah. In other words, what Philip was preaching, they were not fighting in it. They were not questioning it. They were wholeheartedly believing what he said. They were following him. They went to the point, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. In other words, they were saying, I'm converting to Christianity. And if, if, if in a modern church today that was going on, most people would say, well, they accepted Jesus. They're saved. Wouldn't they? But you know what? Most people would tell you that happened to me. They told me I had the Holy Spirit. <laughs> they told me I had the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit was doing all those things for me, but I was just like those Samaritans. I had God do a lot of, he delivered me from smoking and from drinking and all kinds of stuff, you know. But I still didn't have the Holy Ghost. And these people still did not have the Holy Ghost. And uh, though all these wonderful things, they were receiving what was preached. They were being converted. They was being baptized in Jesus' name. You see, the Holy Ghost is a definite experience. It is. It, it, is a, it is a real, genuine baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when it happens to people, they begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And if that hasn't happened unto you, you need that experience with God. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You do. I'm not saying God hasn't done anything for you. He loves you. He does a lot of things for a lot of people. But he wants us to experience the Holy Ghost. That's what he wants us to experience. And that's where these people were as of yet, even though Philip was a man of God and he was sent to them and he was preaching to them and miracles were happening and devils were being cast out. People were getting baptized in Jesus' name. People were receiving the word of God. They still didn't have the Holy Ghost. So Peter and John heard that the things was going on the apostles Peter and John, and they came down, and the Bible says when they laid their hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. <laughs> he offered the apostles money. Now, Simon had already been baptized in Jesus' name too. He offered them money. What's the next one, Brother Demon? Praise God. Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Give me this power. Amen. And then what was the next verse? Now, what was he wanting? He was wanting the power to lay hands on people that the people could receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee because, listen to me, listen, look at this, this is so important what I'm trying to tell you now. The, your money perish with you because thou hast thought that thee, what? Now what is eternal life? Come on. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The gift of God is the Holy Ghost. Amen. He, said to, he says to this man, your money perish with you because you have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. That is the gift of God. Amen. 
And that experience, when you have that experience, you have eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that gift comes through Jesus Christ. That's why Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, because it comes through the Jesus Christ. Be baptized in the name of the one that died for you, Jesus Christ. And if you'll do that, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It'll come to you. That's why we preach that all the time. Because people need eternal life. You see, the Holy Ghost is the gift of God. Amen. What kind of a gift is it? It's God. <laughs> it's God. Open the package. What you're going to find? It's God in there. That's what man needed. Sin removed God from man. But through Jesus, man now can experience God. And that's the Holy Ghost baptism. And that experience is eternal life. And there's no use of speaking about the other gifts if you don't have the Holy Ghost. Because people are lost without the Holy Ghost. I know that's not what a lot of people preach, but that's what the Bible teaches. And I said, that's what the Bible teaches. It's for all nations. Again, I don't mean to be repetitious, but you'll probably hear me preach it a lot more because this is important. This is salvation. Amen. John the Baptist came before Jesus. And what was his message? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. There's come a one after me. He's mightier than I. The latchet of his shoes, I'm not worthy to stoop down and loose. What's he going to do? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John said, I'll baptize you with water. But when he comes, he's going to give you the Holy Ghost. That's what we're talking about. And Simon saw through the laying on the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He saw something definite, folks. Now, it does not say there that he, spoke, that he saw them speak in tongues. But he saw, what he saw is what they saw on the day of Pentecost. Right. Peter said, we have received the Holy Ghost, and he has shed forth this, which you now see and hear. What did they see? And hear. They saw and heard them speaking in tongues. Right. And you read the Bible, and that's what happens when people get the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we don't seek tongues. We seek the Holy Ghost. We ask God for the gift of God. And he gives us the Holy Ghost and then we speak in tongues. Amen. Praise God. The tongues comes with the experience. If you seek tongues, you may just get tongues. You may just get some jibber jabber. But what you need is the gift of God. Everybody, all of us, we need the gift of God. And it comes through Jesus. Through the shed blood of Jesus. God will not come into our life without the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because you know what? We got to get rid of that sin problem. And only the blood of Jesus can do that. Man cannot be restored to God without that sacrifice. But any man can be restored to God through that sacrifice. Amen. Praise God. So we need the gift of God. When he, let, when he uh, ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. Praise God. Now let's look at 1 Peter 1 and 18 and 19. <clears throat> For as much, Peter to the Christians, he says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, Received uh, by the by tradition from your fathers, what was you redeemed by? The precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Ephesians chapter two and verse eight. I'm trying to hurry here uh, for the sake of our time and to get to where we need to go. But Ephesians chapter two verses eight and nine, Paul tells the church at Ephesus there, for by grace, in other words, it's not by your works. It's not by what we have done. It's what God has given us. Salvation is a gift from God. That experience is a gift from God. It comes through Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. The channel by which God gets the grace of God to you, because that's what that word uh, through means, 
the channel by which the way we get water into this place is that pipe out there from the road to the meter up to here. That's the channel that gets the water to the faucets in here. If you don't have that channel, amen, you ain't got no water here. Amen. And Jesus is that channel. Amen. The grace of God, what Jesus did for us. For by grace you are saved, and that's through believing. Faith, your faith. Amen. If you don't believe this, you'll, it'll never happen. Praise God. I've heard people, you know, make a reference to being afraid of what's going to happen when they get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Don't worry. You ain't going to get it unless you believe it and want it. I wish it would just fall on a lot of people. And there's times whenever it does, but I'm going to tell you something. Whether you know it or realize it or not, something happened in the heart of that person for that to happen. Amen. God does not pour his spirit upon people that don't want him. Amen. But through faith, through believing, he says, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. It's what God has done. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So the gift of Christ, the gift of Christ, what do we read in our first scripture? Ephesians 4, 7. For unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You notice the reading there? According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Grace is given to us according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Amen. So let's look at Ephesians 4, 7. Right, I mean, that's the one I just read. Uh, Colossians <clears throat> chapter number 1, verse 27. Praise God. So the gift of Christ is Christ in us. That's what Paul told the Colossians. Colossians 1, 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. This is the mystery. Not everybody sees and understands. But that experience of the Holy Ghost, that's what we're talking about. That is, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That experience is actually Jesus on the inside of you. Did you know that? That is really Jesus. When you see somebody come to church and they get in the spirit and they're praying and they, they're, they're experiencing that awesome experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, praise God, that is Jesus doing that in them. That is them experiencing uh, Christ in them. Amen. Praise God. Now, he doesn't leave us just because we don't talk in tongues 24 sevens. Amen. We get that initial baptism of the Holy Ghost, and there's those times of refreshing that do come. Amen. But he does not leave us. He's still with us. Amen. Praise God. He's still there. We do need to renew that experience with him. We need to have that fellowship with him. Amen. Through the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. But that is Christ in us. Let's look at Galatians 4 and 6. And because you are sons, he's talking to the Christians, because you are sons, not just servants anymore, if you read the whole context. But anyway, because you are sons, what has God done? God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Because you're, if you're not his son, that, spirit, that, that is not going to happen to you. But when you give your life to the Lord, the, what did the scripture say in, Colossi, I mean in Corinthians? He said, come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you. Touch not the unclean thing, I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So when we come out from among them and we consecrate ourselves to God, give ourselves to him, he says, I'm going to be your daddy, and you're going to be my children. You're going to be my sons and daughters. And so what happens whenever that happens, when we come out amongst them, give our lives to the Lord, God sends forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. That's Christ in us. That's Jesus really there. It's not the body of Jesus. It's that spirit that was in that body of Jesus inside of us. Amen. We have Jesus on the inside of each and every one of us. And that's what the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is not the third person in the Trinity. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of Christ. 
That's God inside of us. God is that Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the Spirit of Christ. There's not three different spirits. Ephesians 4, 4 and 5, 4 and 3, 4 through 5, something like that, those scriptures. It says there's one spirit. There's one God and there's none other but he. That one God is a spirit. And he comes back into our lives, redeem, restoring us from the fall, puts the spirit of Christ inside of us. That's reconciliation to God. We've been reconciled to God by the death of his son, by that sacrifice, that lamb and perfect sacrifice. Praise God. Now, this is important. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ, the Father, all of that, God is that Holy Spirit. He is that Holy Spirit. We must have that. Praise God. It's not what we deserve. If we got what we deserve, we'd all be lost. But because of what Jesus did, we can be saved. We can have salvation. We can be restored to God. Listen to this, Romans 8 and 9. I'm just going to read the latter part of that scripture because that's what the meat of what we're trying to get out. Now, if any man have not, what does it say? If any man have not, the Spirit of Christ. Brother Rattle, if you're judging me or you're judging them. No, I'm not judging them. It's what the Word says. This Word's real, folks. This Word's the truth. The, how important is the Holy Ghost? How important it is to have the gift of God? Without it, it says we're none of His. Amen. Whenever we are his, he sends forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad. That's why when I heard about being baptized in Jesus' name, I didn't want to wait. Take me to the water. I'm glad. Mr. Tabor, I hope he's still up on it. He may be getting baptized this week. He wants to do that in the creek there. Amen. Get baptized in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter. As long as it's baptized by immersion in the name of the one that died for you, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You be baptized in my name, you'll be a worse sinner than whenever you got baptized. But when you get baptized in the name of Jesus, he's your Savior. It washes away your sins. And the Holy Ghost says, I'll come live there. I'll come into that place. Amen. Because that sacrifice is on that life. Oh, praise God. It's important to have the Holy Ghost. We need the gift of God. Amen inside of our lives praise god let's look at some more scriptures <clears throat> praise god i'm gonna try to have to watch my clock here for your sake thank you lord praise god it's the gift of god we need the holy ghost so let's look at first corinthians chapter 12 and verse number four again I've said this already once. I'd probably save more time if I just say things one time. But the rest of the gifts, now there's a lot of people seeking, I want to be a healer. I want to be a, a prophet. I want to be this or that. Let me tell you something. You need to be Holy Ghost filled before anything. There's no need of looking for other stuff if we hadn't got that down. Because all the other stuff works through that experience. A person can get something that's not the Holy Ghost. But I'm talking about the stuff that's really from God. It works through an individual's life or individuals through the Spirit being inside of their lives. The Spirit has got to be there, the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of Christ. Amen. It's got to be there. When once that experience is there, amen, lots of things can take place. When he ascended on high, when he was raised from the dead, when Jesus was, when he ascended on high, amen, praise God, he gave, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And so that's what John preached about Sunday night. We need the power of God, don't we? Come on, we need the power of God. Amen. We can have the doctrine. We can have the teaching. 
And that's good. We need it. We're talking about it right now tonight, the teachings of truth. But we also need the power of God's Spirit working through our ministries. And each and every one of us, God that is inside of our lives, he wants to do something through our lives. And we're not all the same. And we're not used all the same. Never was intended to be used the same. Amen. But every one of us, when God filled us with his spirit, there's something he wants to do through you. And some of us, several things he wants to do through us. And he's going to do it by his spirit that he put in us. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts. Diversities. There's differences of gifts. You know, we talk about these gifts here in uh, this chapter here. And you say that we talk about the nine spiritual gifts, right? You know, can y'all can y'all uh, mention them? Yeah. There's miracles. There's healings. There's tongues. There's interpretation of those tongues. There's discerning of spirits. That's five. There's faith. There's wisdom. And it's not talking about normal wisdom. It's talking about from the spirit of God. There's knowledge. Amen. Which one am I leaving out? Prophecy. And prophecy. Amen. Those are, but you know what? Those are not the only things that God does. Those are listed. Amen. But it's not a completeness of everything that God does. It's not. Praise God. I believe these are examples. These are examples. Paul's given examples of how God will work through his people in the church as people. And not everybody will be used possibly in every one of these, though anybody can be used in any of them. Right. Amen. Praise God. But God has specific areas that as we apply ourselves and as we seek God, these things are available to us. And, and it tells the Christians to seek earnestly the best gifts. It says that. What are the best gifts? The best gifts are the gifts that edify the church. That's what the gifts are for. You know what the gifts are for? Not to give people a big head. It don't mean they're super spiritual. God gives the gifts and operates through the gifts of the Spirit so the church can be blessed. That's what they're there for. Praise God. And I'm kind of jumping the gun. But anyway, there it says here, Chapter 12, verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, though you see all the different kind of gifts that people are used in, it's the same spirit that's doing all of it. It's the Holy Ghost that's doing it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And it's different ways that God's working. Chapter 12, verse 11, but all these, he listed the gifts of the spirit, uh, as we call them. But all these worketh that one is self, same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. In other words, God is the one, you know, <clears throat> it doesn't mean that uh, necessarily that a person has plateaued out and they're higher than everybody else. It just means according to what God wants to do with who he wants to do it through. Amen. He can use anybody. I remember when we was going to church uh, in Midway, <clears throat> there was a sister, Sandy Shea. Y'all remember Sandy Shea? Do you know Sister Shea? Anybody? You, Teresa remembers her. I mean, she's a very peculiar person, a wonderful person, but very peculiar. I mean, she's, her personality is very peculiar. She's real quiet, real quiet, real Real, like, if you look at her and smile, she'll just turn beet red. It's just like it frightens her, you know, for somebody to pay attention to her. Isn't that right, Tracy? I mean, she's very, very, like, oh, 
oh, you know, just like to be recognized. It's like, scares me to death, <laughs> you know. And we was in Midway one time, and, man, the power of the Holy Ghost was moving in there. Church was pretty full of people. And the gifts of the Spirit were, you could tell, you know, that kind of like that holy hush that comes over the congregation, that came over the congregation. And lo and behold, loud and full of power, tongues came forth. And immediately after it, the interpretation came too. And I was, ever, the person that was doing it was behind my back. I, I didn't know who it was, but man, it just, it was awesome. It was powerful. And of all the people that you thought was, would have been less likely to be used, it was Sandy Shea. Sandy Shea was, was being used in the gifts of the Spirit. She would have been one of the last persons that I'd ever thought would have been able to be used that way. Amen. But you know what? God has taken the weak things of the world, and he confounds the things that are wise. Amen. That's what the Bible says. And base things and things that are not to bring to naught the things that are. So no flesh shall glory in his presence. We knew God was doing that, folks. That was completely out of her nature to be like it. But when the Spirit of the Lord came upon her, the righteous are bold as a lion, it says. Amen. Her, that holy boldness hit her, and I'm telling you, she gave forth one of the most beautiful, clearest tongues and interpretation I think I've ever heard in church. So clear. I mean, it was just, and I mean, it was anointing because you could feel the Holy Ghost before it ever came forth. It just, she had it. Amen. God can do that, but a lot of people sit back in church and thinking, you know, I can't be used. I can't do that. Praise God. If we quit doubting and believe God, you'd be surprised what God could do. Right. Amen. He can't do anything without faith. He won't do anything. He can do anything he wants to do, but he, he operates when, when people believe him. Amen. You see, he wants the church to have the gifts operating in them because he wants the church to be edified. And it doesn't just happen behind the pulpit. Amen. It's not supposed to. Amen. Praise God. The church is to edify itself in love. Amen. And that's through the Spirit. Praise God. The gifts of the Spirit does not override the ministry. Amen. The ministry is the leadership of the church. But that doesn't mean that they're the only one that are used by God. Amen. Praise God. The gifts of the Spirit need to operate so that the church can be blessed, so that people that come in, amen. The Bible says you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may uh, be edified, amen. Praise God. It, Paul also tells them about speaking in tongues. He said, I would that you all spoke in tongues, but rather that you prophesy. He said, I want all of you to be in tongue talkers. I want all of you praying in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. He said, but... In the church, when the church service is going on, I'd rather y'all uh, be used in the gifts of prophecy because people will come in and you will speak and tell them their hearts and they will fall down and, say, and confess that God is in you of a truth. In other words, they'll give their hearts to God, realize God's here. Amen. That's what the scriptures teach. He said, forbid not to speak with tongues. That's what he said. Praise God. But let all things be done for edifying. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So all of it works that one and self-same spirit. It's God doing all of it. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 after he said, when he led captivity captive and gave gifts to the men, two verses down he said, and he gave some apostles, some prophets. What did he give to the church? Some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying. God wants the church to be edified of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith 
of, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. The word perfect means complete. A complete man. Unto the measure of the stature and fullness of Christ. In other words, Jesus is our goal. And the gifts of the Spirit need to be operating. The ministry is given so that the church can conform unto Christ. To be like Jesus. He goes on to say that we, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every <clears throat> wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. In other words, God wants you steadfast in the truth. Everything that's said is not true. And so you need the ministry to minister the word of God and get you established in the truth. <clears throat> He don't want us to be tossed to and fro. Then he says, verse 15, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, listen to me, the whole body does this. It's not just the preachers. The whole body fitly joined together. Just like building this building, things were joined together. There's two befores hooked to top plates and bottom plates and Sheetrock hooked to boards and paint hooked to the sheetrock and all kinds of fitly joined. That's where the church is. There's no islands around here. People by themselves. This is a together work. We do it together. Amen. We're all together in this. It's important for all of us to grow together. And everybody's important. Amen. Praise God. The whole body fitly joined together and compacted. You know what a trash compactor is? We're not to be separated. We're to be compacted. Compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Amen. It's what each one supplies. Each one supplies a different part. Each one has their input to the church. Each one has their particular gift and their things that they do to make the church. Amen. The measure and stature of Christ. Amen. According to the effectual working in the measure of, everybody say every part, every part, make it the increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Praise God. I'm not near through, but I think you're through with me. Praise God. <laughs> if the Lord tarries, perhaps there'll be another Wednesday night. I don't know. But God has gifts for men. There's gifts. There's things. Amen. God does not want us. John preached it so well. Not Jeremiah preached it. Man, just awesome, doesn't that? But God does not want us to just have church service. He wants spiritual growth in all, every one of us. Spiritual growth. And he's patient with us. And he's gentle with us. And we're talking about something that happens years and years and years of growth. But we need to realize if we get a mentality, it's time to go to church, and I did it in my religious duty, we miss it all. We need to look and realize that God's wanting to make something out of my life for his kingdom. He has a work for me to do. And I want to grow in that. I want to find out what it is. And as I grow, you know what? I wasn't always a pastor. I wasn't always a pastor. For I got in church in 1979, and I knew inside of my heart. I knew what I was. We didn't read it tonight, but it's in some of our scriptures that we would have read. But there's a thing called helps. And for years, Brother Damon, I knew that's what I was. I wasn't a pastor. I preached. I also roofed the church. <laughs> I mowed the grass. And I went and had nursing home service. You know, I had several nursing home services. After a while, you know, I preached, in, I, I preached 10 years in, in uh, Midway without even being recognized at a, as a preacher. I did it for 10 years, but I'm doing the same thing here tonight, what I did there, just the same way, no restraints. 
you know, but I wasn't a pastor. And then after a while, you know, if you're faithful for what God gives you to do, you know, he may give you some more to do. <laughs> and that's what happened to me. He gave me some more to do. The next step was I was assistant pastor for a few years. And the next thing you know, I felt that the Lord wanted me to start a church in Belton. I didn't even have a preacher's license. I'd been a help all those years. Never tried to get a preacher's license. Wasn't interested in getting a preacher's license. Though I, I loved, I felt like I was doing the right thing preaching. I was work. I was a lay preacher, like you might say, a lay preacher for years. Or help. I knew if I was labeled anything scripture, I was a help. I loved going to home mission churches and helping. I loved that. People just getting started. Oh, I was wanting to do something. We'd pass out tracts. We'd not go teach Bible studies, go to nursing home services. Have service. I'd preach in the local churches, but there's always a pastor there. And then lo and behold, now I'm a pastor. And that's been happening for 18 years. And I believe if I hadn't been faithful, the good Lord wouldn't have called me to more stuff. But when you're faithful... In a few things, he'll make you ruler over many, he said. But the thing about it is, is I wish that we could realize that God wants to make something out of us. You're not going to be the same as me. I'm not going to be the same as you. But God wants to do something with you. You may be the one that's going to prophesy in the church. You may be the one. Listen to me. Stephen was a deacon. And he went out in the community and worked miracles. He wasn't even an apostle. He had great miraculous things because he was full of the Holy Ghost and power. You don't have to be behind a pulpit to do something for God. In fact, whenever we minimize it to the pulpit only, we tie the hands of God. The church is supposed to edify one another in love. We're supposed to be building one another up. We're supposed to be seeking God to help our brothers and sisters, whether it's a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, not your human wisdom. I'm talking about something from the Spirit. When we come and we testify in church, listen to me, we ought to have a word of the Lord. We ought to seek God. And when we testify, when God does something, amen, we need to tell it. Because it helps somebody. Amen. There's things God wants us to do. There's nine gifts mentioned, but I, there's a lot of areas. There's differences of administrations. There's diversities of gifts, differences of administrations, and so on, you know. That's what it says. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. God is wanting to do something with you. Stand with me. I, I'm keeping on, keeping on, keeping on. But praise God. The main thing is be filled with the Holy Ghost. Have a prayer life. Pray. Get in the Spirit. And then when you're there, you know, learn. Learn the Spirit of God. Learn His presence. Learn, spend time with you and learn his voice. Learn when he speaks to you. Learn and make yourself available. Grow. Always stay in harmony with the word of God. Never step out of line with that. Because there are, are people that do that and they, they err from God. The spirit of God, this, this is his word. He will not change it. If you hear something different than this, it's not the Spirit of God. It will always be in harmony with that book. Because that's God breathed. The Spirit, God is that Spirit that gave this book. Stay in line with it. Stay in harmony with it. And you'll be in safe territory. I'm glad Sister Daniel is back. We missed you. We did. Praise God. I'm glad Andy's back. Praise God. Isn't God good? Jeremiah dismisses in prayer.
Yes, Lord.